In my mind, the idea of sales mindset training wasn't something you took serious. It was a joke. I mean, if you think about it, like you're going to give people some quotes, get them excited, tell them some things, and then they're supposed to go out and succeed in their performance. No, because what typically happens in those scenarios, you get a, it's like a splash in a pan and then it doesn't catch on. They go back to work in a week or two and they're doing the same old things they were doing before. But then if you gave them some kind of training, like how to make a phone call, how to close a deal that works. Well, that's what I thought. I thought sales mindset training was a joke. That's what I believed until the earlier part of this year. And I'm going to explain to you what changed and why. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we're going to talk about my belief, the belief system that I had in my mind about sales mindset training and how I thought it was a joke. And you're probably thinking the same idea too, because here's the here's the thing that comes down to, like, where are the sales? If I could teach somebody how to prospect, then I could see that they're landing more appointments. If I could teach somebody how to you know, ask effective questions, I can see that they have more engaging conversations and the deals are progressing further. And if I teach somebody how to close, then naturally they're going to close more deals. That's what I would want. And you're thinking the same thing as a sales leader or as a sales rep, right? Those things, they're not, even though they're not necessarily tangible, there are some skills that you can directly see some result from. But if I give somebody sales mindset training, how am I going to see result on that? Why should I invest thousands of dollars on the hopes of somebody getting a pep rally and making them perform better? Well, this is the concept that I had in my mind for years. Even though as a positive thinking person, I have my Napoleon Hill on the bookshelf and I read those books and I apply them. But thinking about the idea of like, why, why, am I, why do I even invest in something like a, a program that's going to be so expensive when I could simply just do that myself? And here's what happened. Let me go back to back in, we all know what happened back in early part of 2020, right? The, that wretched year, right? The crazy things happened. COVID became rampant. And I was meeting with one of my clients and I'd gone through a program called Thought Pattern for High Performance. It's this program here, if you're watching on, on TSC TV. And it was with the Pacific Institute. I have some friends with that organization and, and they were telling me about some of their programs and so forth for a while. And I finally went into one of their programs in this time period with my coach and I, I went through the program and my mind was just like totally open. I really understood that now there was more to sales mindset and mindset in general than just the idea of a pep rally or a quote or getting somebody excited with some motivational videos. This was more about behavioral change. So I took this information, I started sharing with my client, one of my clients named Scott. And Scott, you can go back and listen to some of the episodes and see what I talked to him about. But he was concerned about what's going to happen at this point with his deals. I then helped them to realize, listen, we need to think in a positive way. We need to have, have a growth mindset. We need to look at some of the behaviors. We need to look at some of the things that we could control and change. And he went from a fixed mindset in some of these things, what might happen with COVID, to a growth mindset. And needless to say, his performance was astronomical. I went through the program and then my friends at the Pacific Institute said, Donald, we are doing, we have a sales program that we want to put together and we want you to be a part of this in some way. I was already drinking their Kool-Aid because what I saw happen in April after this going through the program myself, the, the regular program, I saw a hockey stick in some of our performance. We had some really good months. So I said, something is there. What changed? It was the fact, not was a more skill set uh, uh, training, not that I read more books on how to prospect, not that I listened to more podcasts on that on the topic, was I changed my behaviors and that's what was the biggest critical part. That's what was missing. Let me explain a little bit further. Most salespeople, if you ask them, and you probably do this too with sales reps on your team, and you can do it with, you look at your top performers, the ones who perform on any circumstances, and the ones who are the mediocre and not so top performers. And, and here's what will probably happen. If you ask, they have, both have the same amount of time. They have the eight hours a day that they're working, or however many hours they work, 10, 12 hours. They have the same amount of time. They have the same different types of things they have to do. They have to prospect. Well, they don't have to do it but they get a chance to prospect or they get a chance to to you know use LinkedIn or they reach out to prospects who are in your database. They do the same type of activities. 
One of the sales reps, I guarantee you, will probably say, I don't have time for prospecting because I am so busy trying to do all these other things. Typically, these are some of our underperforming sellers. While our top performing sellers recognize the power and the importance of adding to their, their pipeline, those individuals are doing prospecting consistently. Those individuals tend to have the success that the underperformers aren't having. And the underperformer have a lot of excuses. So what you do, you find an organization like myself where you find a book on prospecting or something on time management and you give it to that rep who is underperforming. You know, you, first thing you probably do, you probably get them to sit down with your top performer and the top performer try to tell or show them what they're doing to help their day. This is the how. So the what is the problem? What is I don't have time to prospect? The how do we fix this is let's go ahead and give you what Joe is doing and you can practice that or you go and read a book or you listen to a podcast like this or you hire someone like me to teach them how to fix that, that sales prospecting problem. Now, the same thing does happen that you probably saw in my figmentative uh, imagination, my thinking about sales mindset program, because what typically will happen in those circumstances, the organization put a seller through the training. The training does help them temporarily, but in due time, the sales rep reflects or re they, they revert back to the same circumstances in the same situation they were, and they stop prospecting. So maybe for a week or two they were, but then those techniques that they learned in a program or the trainings or the ideas they learned from Joe just doesn't stick. The missing ingredient that I learned earlier this year, you want to know what that is? Here's what it comes down to and why I believe in sales mindset training and why you should now is that our thoughts leads to our beliefs. Our beliefs leads to our action. You can even add something else in there. Thoughts leads to the desires those desires then will lead to our beliefs. Those beliefs will then lead to our action. So let me give you an example. If I, be, if I have thought, and I would give you some science behind this too. If I have a thought that no one is answering their phone because of COVID, then I'm going to start having the desires around that. The desire is going to be, well, I don't want to reach out to people because if I do, it's, it's going to be annoying. It's going to be bothersome to them. So my desire is not to bother people anymore. And that, that comes into a belief. My belief now, and you, it's hard to change belief in human beings. The belief that I have now is that you cannot prospect. So if I block time, I'm going to still have the belief that I'm not going to get a hold of people. I'm going to bother people. And therefore, I lead to inaction. That, that leads me to inaction. And this is what we, we, we fill our lives. We start finding things in our lives to justify it. There's something in our brain that's called a reticular activating system. You can look it up. This is a network of, of, of uh of nerves in our brain and this part of our brain is where we store some of our information when it, it it's basically a filter really so let's say for instance if you were looking for a new car say it's a corvette it will be amazed how all of a sudden you start seeing corvette all over the road because our brain starts to subconsciously hold that picture of that corvette and start to point out to you Corvettes throughout the day. My wife and I were looking for a vehicle. It was a RAV4. And it was amazing how all of a sudden we saw a RAV4. It was all, they were always there, but we just never paid attention to them. Now, the sales rep, if a sales rep has this belief that no one's going to answer the phone, then that sales rep is doing themselves a disservice because now they have this picture in their mind and they're putting this into the RAS. So they start looking for things around that. They'll probably fi uh, find things on the news. They'll probably find articles that says people are, you know, the economy is bad and things are going to worse. Or they probably find, you know, they'll find sources. They'll find ways to justify the things that they are thinking. And then that continues to perpetuate and leads to them not doing anything. You look at your top performer, they do the opposite. Those top performing sellers, they have this belief or this desire to succeed and the thoughts that comes from that. And it leads to this belief system that they come, they, they have that I'm here to help people. That belief system then leads to action that I need to find those people each and every single day to help. And as a natural result, because they're doing this, they're continually farming, they always have stuff in their pipeline. And they're the ones because it's validating their, their beliefs. 
So they're they're finding people who are like minded, other sellers who are succeeding. They're also reading books, and they're they're probably connecting with uh, with blogs that are talking about the good things that are happening. And they're keeping this into their res. So their brain or the res is helping them to be to point out to them things that's validating that belief. So here's what I learned: we have about fifty to seventy five thousand thoughts per day. With each of those thoughts. 80% of those thoughts are negative. Even the top performers, all of us, we have negative thoughts. Now, what we want to do is to be able to look for ways how we can start giving ourselves positive thoughts. And that comes from, again, the beliefs. And those beliefs then drive our behaviors and those things that we're doing on a day-to-day -day level. The other thing that I learned is that with our brain, the way that we think and the way that we perform when this, with mindset is that typically... 80% of the action or the, the thoughts or the things that happen to our, in, that we do each day or we think about are just things that just happen automatically. And that's a good thing. Some ways, right? You know, you drive the car, you're not thinking about braking and how to hold the, the wheel. Those things become habits and you form that habit and you can do, you can drive the car and talk on a phone at the same time. When it comes towards sales, imagine an individual with a bad habit. Those bad habits then become autopilot. They go into the office, they go get coffee, they sit around and talk to a bunch of people. They, or if they're home, they do a bunch of other things. They start doing laundry. They start doing all these other tasks, cleaning their desk. And these become habits, clean out the emails. And all these things become the habit because it's an avoidance because they have the belief that no one's going to answer their phone. So even though the block time on their, their, their day to call and talk to people, because of the belief that they have and because of these different bad habits, they drown out the time and they don't do the things that they're supposed to. When it comes down to it, sales mindset training is powerful. It works. For us, one of our clients, they went through a program with us and they saw a 200% increase year to date in performance. In the middle of the pandemic, they saw this high growth. Their industry is well, there's a, there's, it tied back to it. You might say there's some benefits towards that. But even before our program, even before going through this, they still had a difficult time prospecting. They still had some difficult uh, moments. But until they made that shift, that mental shift, that's when the performance started to really come for their team. And that's when they saw that 200, 230% increase to be exact. So how and why and what makes this happen? An individual must change their behavior. Change the behavior comes from the beliefs and comes from the thoughts that they're having. That way, when those behaviors, they can question, why am I doing this? They can then go back to see what is causing. Because it doesn't matter if we gave them a lot of tips, or gave them strategy, how they can improve their prospecting or how they can make cold calls or become even better efficient at that. It's not going to change anything unless the belief or the patterns that they're currently doing, those things change. And that's the difference. That's what happened with us. So when I find sellers and they tell me, yeah, I, you know, maybe the, the, an excuse could be, uh, I go back and think about how many, what's some of the excuses you get on a day to day level from your sales rep, right? The, the, it's price. Price is a problem. Well, that's the belief they have. So we might give them techniques on how to overcome that objection or get around it. Since they have the belief that price is always going to be an issue, doesn't matter what objection you give them, that it doesn't fix it. But if you can sit down with that seller and coach them or you have them go through the program where they can analyze and figure out why do they have this belief? Maybe it's something from their childhood or maybe they got told by one customer before that a price was expensive and a customer a prospect wasn't a good fit. So because of this belief now that they carry this with every single deal and that prevents them from really performing. So you must find out what is the behavior, what's causing that problem before you go invest in programs that's going to help them give them techniques on overcoming objection. Am I making sense with that? The program that we have is called Thought Pattern for High Performance Sales Professionals. And this is designed, is steeped in neuroscience. There's a lot more technical terms that we go into, but I'm not going into all of that. But in the program, the way we have broken it up is that instead of giving individuals a data dump, we've broken it up over the course of a couple of weeks. So we have two hours of training. So you, it's all together about yeah, 14, sometimes to about 16 hours of training. But we typically do about two to three days per week. So this way, the individuals can get access to the information they need. They digest it in smaller chunks. They're able to practice it and come back in a couple of days. And over the course of two or three weeks, they're able to consume the content and they're able to change their behaviors. That's what the big thing about this is. And you could go to a mindset. 
you'll see the program, you see how all of the different content and how that it, it guides them. And what we want to do in this program, we do breakout sessions and we do role plays. We give opportunities for practice. This is work. It's not just come and listen to some, some motivational videos and get some quotes and then that's it. You're going to practice these things. You're going to learn and understand yourself, understand how you have this belief, how did they form, how you have these, these what we call schematomas or these blocks or these things that, that these blind spots that we all we all put up and how you could get around that how you can become more effective once we can break some of those things down and help change the seller's belief system and they have a fix or I mean, see me a growth mindset go from a fix to a growth mindset that sales reps start to perform once that sales reps start to perform then we start to see magic in their numbers then we can give them more skill set techniques once they have this belief that they can succeed yeah now we can teach them some more linkedin tricks or some more strategies with closing or some more strategies with asking effective questions because that will then be able to stick because the habits and the beliefs are set. So if you are thinking about this program, if you're curious about it, if you want to learn more about it, if you want to understand how I came to believe so strongly that mindset pro, uh, sales mindset programs are no longer jokes and that they're real, I want you to check this out and uh, just go to the salesevangelist.com slash mindset or get with myself and talk to me or one of our team members more than willing to share with you how this works. I share with you the story of one of our clients. They saw a 230% increase. We've seen other organizations as well, similar, similar situation. And that's not everybody getting that same type of result, but you're going to see the increase. And I would promise you, if you go through the program, your sellers will guarantee they're going to get at least 10 to 20% increase in their sales performance. If a seller can have a 10 to 20% increase in your sales performance, what would that look like for your overall team's pipeline? What would that look like for you as an individual recognizing that your sellers are performing? And what would that look like for your sales rep with their numbers and the money they're taking home? It would be life-changing. So I want you to be able to change your beliefs. Check out our program, this, this sales mindset training, and check out how this can help you and your organization. Would love to talk to you more about it. Again, I share stuff like this because I want to help you. I want you to succeed. I want you and your team to be able to thrive. I want you to first off find more of those ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you reach out to them. I want you to close more deals. And, and this is why I recommend tools like Pipe Drive. I recommend tools like Wingman. These tools are great. But here's the thing. The tools will not work until you change your mindset, right? So if you're not doing that mindset change, because no matter how much you ex expend on, on new tools and new strategies, unless you have, if you have this doubtful belief that they're not going to work, they're not going to work. And I've seen them and I love them and they work for me. So this is why I recommend them. But I want you all to change that belief and I want you to test them out. So check out my friends over at Pipe Drive and take advantage of that offer and change your mindset on that. And also check out Wingman and see how that could help your team. As always, I want you to go out each and every single day and do big things. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up in the bottom right hand corner. Also to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are gonna help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.